upskilling maintaining a healthy lifestyle for both physical and mental health are the key means to be successful while being happy in today's disruptive times and this holds true for all organizations as well as individuals applying similar principles in higher education teaching learning effectiveness can be enhanced by implementing contemporary pedagogical practices a must for today and next normal designing the teaching learning processes that excite inspire and involve learners at both mind and heart shall earn all rounded goodness she distinctly earns contentment in navigating teams in academia and individuals by working on the above said pratima kandelwal has earned prized opportunities at many institutions all over india to share and address the participants both the teachers as well as students these have been at nptel iit madras iit bhilai bits pilani hyderabad campus infosys bengaluru biocan academy nahep gb pant university which is india's first agriculture university out of pantnagar and ndri colonel vyambai university of sri lanka and knowledge bees in united kingdom biotechnica rotary bangalore and many more in today's episode let's get pratima's insights on agility and attitude in the new normal i'm sure everyone is curious about this topic because how the world is unwinding itself as we step into the third wave as we step into the different variants of this covid 19 it is very very important for us to be agile and and maintain positive attitude to be successful in the new normal all right so this is the guiding voice podcast series tgv for a better future this podcast is to help professional students it employees and entrepreneurs to shape their careers so folks in case if you haven't rated or reviewed our podcast on apple or podchaser request you to provide your rating and leave a candid review because every rating and review will motivate us to bring in more and more useful content to you this is your host navin samala and i have about 18 years of rich and diverse experience in the field of information technology during every episode we interact with industry experts or thought leaders or academicians or coaches across the globe to drive some insightful conversations that will help each one of you learn some amazing stuff also we share an interesting trivia or a fun fact towards the end and folks you know you'll acquire more knowledge for every minute from tgv than any other podcast in this space thank you so much for tuning in and we are pleased to welcome pratima to be part of tgv's journey in shaping the careers and lives of millions across the globe pratima welcome to tgv wonderful thanks so much navin for the beautiful journey and and my introduction also i must say that the way tgv is growing and doing great for the community you mentioned absolutely amazed and appreciating So looking forward for this session thank you thank you for the kind words and thanks for all the support in fact it is uh, good to see a positive note from guests like you as well as all the well wishes because of which we are making great progress and we wish to continue that in the new year and beyond Absolutely. all right so my new year wishes i really wish to add that i do foresee i will not say wish but i foresee the tgv doing wonders in this 2022 amid so uncertainty around us Thank you so much. All right. So with that note, let's talk briefly about your career journey. Like you have crafted an illustrious career journey. So what are top three things that have helped you so far? Yes, Naveen. Uh, nice question. I must say that uh, with 20 years of teaching, uh, research, leadership and mentoring role, I really, in the last decade, I really found it that there is some lacunae, particularly in higher education, where we expect a lot from teachers for the young communities which we say i personally say they are the future of the nation but when it comes to molding them for today's lifestyle today's career aspects today's fast moving domains of you just pick up any area it's there so can we really do beyond syllabus can we do really beyond academics and really mold them and that's exactly the role which comes in pedagogy or in actually andragogy for higher education so that was my point and i really felt that i had that capacity way back 7 8 years back i did see that spark in me that i can do better or if not good uh, or just that i can do better in teaching as well as in the training aspect and that made me navin take it up that yes if i can facilitate teachers to time is coming and you see the last 4 years with huge disruption by industry and with now last 3 years the way we, the world is witnessing covid new new strain every day we, every often i should say we do see that how important is the role of teachers picking up the newer roles beyond only teaching and making them uh, their students ready 
this exactly I felt and I am into capacity building. I would like to say this. Oh, so what are the top three qualities that have helped you in, in terms of, okay, this particular passion of coming up with a pedagogy, okay, which is going to cover something beyond syllabus because that has many people might have thought about it because I, as a student, I felt, okay, why my teachers are just covering this particular school syllabus? Can we have something beyond, right? So likewise, what are top three things that have attributed to it? First thing is that I'm open to learn myself. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, as a professor and head also, I was open to learn from my younger team members as well as the students. I'm sure, Naveen, you will also agree that today's students know much more than what we were as students. In fact, you also would have been doing much better than we. I was a student. So uh, this uh, is a beautiful thing to observe and uh, look, learn from them. And that makes a better team also. That was the first thing. Number two, I am open to taking risks. Leaving a state government job and coming on my own was not that easy uh, about 18 years back. So that was something. And I did see that, yes, if I can dive in private sector education, there are risks, but there are a lot of new opportunities. So that was the second aspect. And I'm open to changes in terms of even not being very comfort in very comfortable job. And so I break the comfort zone and uh, do that, I try new things. And the third is that, I really want to use the opportunities which the time is throwing. Not that I am being uh, immobilized by one or two aspects, but the new times, I'm sure all the, our audience will also agree, the learned audience, I must say right now, that uh, today we are in VUCA world. So it is not only today, from last few years, I, I can say four to five with confidence, inclusive of uh, this COVID times. We are in volatile, we are in agile, we are in uncertain and ambiguous world. So please see with these four aspects, how many new opportunities wrapped up this in challenges can come. So I felt all these three, I do have, let me try. I may, I may go slow, but I think that this whole journey of particularly last two years have been amazingly well in the difficult times, Naveen, I would like to say this. So first of all, kudos to you. Quitting a state government job and pursuing a passion is not that easy. And I can see that appetite for risk as well as that zeal for learning and everything might have contributed to. Thank you for sharing that with our audience. So with that, let's uh, talk about agility in the new normal. So how do you define agility? Like in general, like it is nothing but being, but what is agility in the new normal? Great. Absolutely. Agility in new normal to me is how open I as a person can see what is happening in and around me. Many of us do see with uh, around us, but how about in me? Uh, the, the, it is added with how much I can really foresee the changes which are coming. One is present changes. One is reading the future. And the third most important segment is, can I really adapt to them? Can I really pick it up the signals? Can I modulate and transform myself to the new times? So time is changing. We have to agree. I think in academia, in education, be it school or higher education, Teachers have seen the, uh, the need for meg the maximum need, I must say, for agility. You would have seen, they, were, they never thought that online teaching can happen. They never thought online assessment or online assessment. Students were pretty fast ready, but teachers, they took time. All the bandwidth of the age, younger, the mid-age, or the senior. Certainly, it is proportional to the, uh, the way we are exposed to technology. So that agility... Teachers world across have seen our Indian teachers are no exception. They rose to the challenge. And that's why when agile our systems are the way we are in the ecosystem needs to also be agile. That's why you often take students also to be, in fact, faster in agility to pick it up signals. So react, but reflect. That's agility to me in the new norm. Oh, very insightful. And now let's talk about attitude. And one thing that actually resonates with me, like when you are hiring somebody, people say, don't hire just by the skill set, go by the attitude, like whether this person is oh, going yes. to adjust and all, right? So likewise, okay. what should be somebody's attitude in the new normal? Great. So attitude is in new normal is actually, if you permit, I would like to take attitude individually also, then I will wrap, uh, include with the new normal aspect. Well, attitude itself, uh, many of us understand, you know, the outlook, the behavior. To be honest, Naveen, attitude is much, much beyond it. What am I carrying in my genes? What culture? What family I come from? How I've seen my environment in my childhood, in my mid-age and college age or university and in my job for the professionals? 
all all add to it to our attitude so one is what i'm carrying one is what i'm imbibing and the third what i'm contemplating in my mind all three a plus b plus c will give attitude and in new normal agility is to be an attitude because if i can see what is going to happen i will and i will get ready for the uh, for my immediate future i will also calculate oh how many possibilities are there to take up this new roles or assignments or challenges i'm sure you will agree many of us say that oh the time is very challenging but there are some who also say hey wait the time has very new opportunities also so that's the difference in attitude is the covid time challenging or full of opportunities with challenges around us that's completely defines and i'm sure audience will correlate this beat in students life beat in professional or your domain like it the really which is growing so beautifully in this year as well with lots of challenges new new embarkments are happening similarly for teaching community also in fact these two words agility and attitude are in the family is the society are in the neighborhood much much certainly in the organizations and institutions which we talk that's attitude to me so in new normal we need to pick it up faster we need to modulate and adapt so if you are fine i would like to say adaptation or adaptability adds to attitude good attitude positivity and with the agility is there the only three letter word which comes to my mind is wow that wow will take us to the much much greater heights i can say with high confidence that exactly is happening to many startups if you see and why i can say the tgv itself is an example in this category i would like to add that wow that's so beautifully explained agility when combined with right right attitude and it is going to create a wow factor and uh, you touched upon various aspects with regard to how attitude of a person is built right it is not just something which is seen outside but the culture the background and at the same time looking at the future in terms of what somebody is thinking about i think this is very well summarized now let's talk about your current experience in terms of you started building the capacity in the academia so what made you to converge this two decades of experience of teaching leadership and research into this domain why do you want to focus on this one great uh, lovely question and i really look forward to answer when i am asked in one or other way and i appreciate the way you have put forth it so i mean it has been that uh, as i was mentioning in the beginning as well i do see i have been seeing that the gaps in what is required in the classroom now digital or physical or we today we have another kind of classroom digital half digital half physical digital is a new terminology which we use today so in all the three fashions we do see that the one is knowledge one is subject information the other is the way i present it as a teacher to my students community so i may be an excellent uh, researcher or academician i would have been a gold medalist in fact i am gold medalist from my university so it does not uh, translate into success in the classroom that's for me but what about my students community who are bound to listen to me for 60 minutes minimum gone are the days when teachers could say hey listen what i'm saying that's what is important and i'm sure the biggest agility today which teachers face is what are they going to teach is everything available on web beat youtube beat open learning resources beat websites of the university or beat absolutely the way the students want to learn through podcasts through blogs through vlogs you just name it we have the learning uh, today learning is so easy only the attitude to learning is required so teachers today from couple of years particularly in this pandemic time world over are facing challenge how to make my students learn and listen to me that exactly my focus pitches in in fact i started much before pandemic because the waves of change were very much visible from last i think mid of last decade i would say really so if at all our students have to be really uh, captured their interest have to be captured if we want innovation which is all uh, really a little worrying for our nation we don't score high on in innovation index um, there are a lot of efforts going on i must say but nevertheless we have to there's a lot of catching up which is required uh, do you know i'm sure i you will also agree that the changes and such things can the environment can only come classrooms be it school be it higher education or be it from young professionals so that temperament the capacity is in teachers to develop we cannot say only parents no parents and teachers together in and beyond home so uh, my capacity building uh, attitude as well as inputs come in this area 
can I make the teachers ready for to today and tomorrow? But not only for tomorrow, today. And tomorrow is coming very fast, sooner than what we expect. Similarly, can students today who are not very comfortable in terms of small issues, they feel sad. Uh, permit me to say the word. Today, depression is a fashionable word. This little unfortunate part of the present times. No, if we go to the deeper, ask Nimhan's community, what is depression or anxiety? There are big no, no. Today, our students, younger population are very into easy habits, which are not good for their health or overall for them. So if that is the case, there is so much more to do beyond teaching only. And as I told, what they are going to teach is already with them in, the, uh, with the, in their basket, in their kitty, through the various uh, online tools. So teachers need to really open their wings to come forward and take up the bat baton and responsibility to transform these young minds into much stable, stronger and lifelong learners. This exactly is the mandate which I'm carrying through various means of reaching, connecting, collaborating, disseminating and picking up the signals, again, transforming my inputs. This is what I'd like to say. For both. So I try to work, I mean, for both teachers as well as students' community. And wellness is my health uh, because I'm a food technologist. So wellness is, comes in my, uh, I, I should say, easy forte. So I talk about preventive health care. Please note the word preventive, not curative, but preventive. All thanks and all due regards to the medical doctors. Yes, they are there to cure. But really, let's take our own let's take our as responsibility, not as a burden. Take pre preventive steps. So I deal with preventive food, healthcare, good foods for body as well as for mind. That's my role. First of all, kudos on that uh, passion as well as you're embarking on a noble mission of educating the educators okay so that students can focus on what needs to be learned and all and here comes my next question i'm really curious to understand because right now there are so many avenues for the student community as well as the teachers community wherein they can learn and upgrade themselves only thing is they lack focus right which means we are distracted we are surrounded by various social media tools okay and every now and then we get a, a ding a notification kind of thing and suddenly the attention diverts so on and so forth. So in this case, like you already started building this uh, capability for the academy and all, how is the response like from the fraternity that you are going to serve both from the teaching perspective as well as on the receiving side? Such a nice question, Naveen, I must say. Yes, the response is amazing. The sessions which uh, are about, say 90 to 120 minutes, they wrap it up with the sharing of emotions, the challenges when it comes to teachers. And will you believe, Naveen, that students, when I deal with students of 18 to 24 age bracket, particularly, and now we have started with school students also, there are so much which students have to say. There is so much which students have to share. There is so much which students want to have some answers to be sorted out. There is confusion and how beautifully you will narrate it. There is digital distraction. Attention span is a challenge. So the thing, the notification, the way the beautiful tones keep coming, all the business intelligence business that's okay but the power of uh, controlling ourselves is in our hand so students when they are told when they are motivated when they are also told how not only why but how to handle such distractions how to take care of self how to be a better individual they all agree that's the beautifully majority of them uh, say that oh i really wish we that we do continue and that's the reason many or, much, or somewhere they connect me also with one-to-one -one email. I often leave my email or uh, the way they, they can connect in LinkedIn, exactly that too. Although I do not preach myself marketing, but yes, uh, I feel that, uh, you know, the solace, the, the returns which I get in terms of their satisfaction is amazing, which uh, I think, I don't know, I was not getting this much in my full-time job as well, I can say this. So both teachers... There are teachers who say, yes, it was a little difficult for us initially. But yes, when we, I, I give them homework. I use gamification tool also. So with these two things, uh, I sometimes my sessions also have uh, pre, I will not say assessment, but some inputs before the session. And uh, the way the Google Forms are filled, the way, again, technology helps a lot. I'm sure you also agree to that. So does our audience, how much, it's up, again, it's up to us how much I can use technology. But the way they connect is the word, not contact. The way they connect, 
before or during and after session. I am enjoying that journey. I will only say this line. That's why I am continue to move ahead in this area. I I second I'm sorry that. Asking this good question. Yeah, I I second that in terms of as long as even one person is coming back and says, "Hey, this is extremely helpful," right? That is so rewarding. Right? Nothing can beat that. No no financial good. return can reward that. Who knows better than you and your team, <laughs> Sudhakar? That the way you get beautiful responses from your audience. Absolutely. That's yeah. This is all your own success story as well. Really uh, amazing. Right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that note. And with that, uh, let me get on to my next question. So we spoke about this digital, right? Physical and digital classrooms are emerging. Likewise. So what uh, what do you foresee in terms of things or the trends that are going to unfold in the education sector in the near future? Great. So the trend will be in two directions. One is using technology. One is uh, reaching out to students. And the other important aspect which is coming, which has been in wraps in Indian context quite much, it has been in wraps. But all thanks to pandemic, it has opened up, which is social emotional learning. So one is that uh, the education sector is accepting, and the, the national education policy 2020 already is in place. Happy to share with the audience that Karnataka is the one of the first state to launch NEP in this very academic year, which is 21-22 running. So a lot of newness is there. Our policy makers, academicians, certainly with the learning community, which we have realized that the focus on teaching and learning has to be on the learners, not on the teachers. how beautifully a teacher teaches is now becoming secondary how much students have absorbed assimilated analyzed uh, and finally they can lead to to creation of new knowledge is what is being sought so the focus is will be shared with teacher and students to begin with leading to finally the focus much much more on students that's the first change we are going to witness it's already started number 2 is that the technology will be a great great enabler now beat digital never in the in fact only it is december 2021 navin that i had digital sessions i had uh, audience sitting right in front of me say 40 to 60 numbers and through the one of the platforms i am talking to audience which are available online so never we have done that i have been only doing online before pandemic it was only offline so this last month itself the way i see in fact it was just last week when i was taking a session for a part of a university i got a silent place and i said to myself can can i really adapt and enable myself to this environment 50 students and uh, i was teaching them with gamification from i always felt no i can always is you know the laptop is a great help but that day it was only the phone device which was helping out just a small example these changes are coming very fast so digital will rule technology will be a big big game player and certainly when there are so much distractions it the social emotional aspect am i ready to learn the ability to learn itself has to be seen so there also the focus will go which has never happened british has left us with one size fits for all it took us a huge years 70 plus years to really understand no it does not so now it is all being customized so that exactly will happen and for that understanding students mind understanding teachers needs will also be a huge player. requirement so we have uh, institutions of national importance which do work on this model already but lot lot perhaps 90 95% of the organizations have to open up their eyes and mind on all the three things together not leaving anyone in fact these are not optional they are compulsory to take it so these three major changes we see and students will be going coming towards self learning we are yet to use much frequently but the beautiful time i see the smile on my face is all because of that we are going to cultivate self learners now how beautiful the country's future will self learning and then community based learning and customized learning so these are the top yes. three trends right yes. all right yes great this has been fabulous conversation so far so pratima let us switch gears and lighten up the mood of our audience as well we're in I would like to ask you a few interesting rapid fire questions just to oh, yes. let our audience know other side of you if you are ready let's oh, get started <laughs> ready <laughs> <laughs> all right let me shoot the first bullet out of the rapid fire so given mm-hmm. a chance would you time travel to past or future future no wonder <laughs> <laughs> all right here comes my next one mm-hmm. who would you be reborn as given a chance well i will say dr apj abdul kalam wow 
Yeah, he's such an amazing personality. In fact, yeah, oh, he's yes. inspired so many scientist. people. All right. Let's move on to my next one. Uh, what is one random skill that you like to learn? Random skill. I'll say programming. Oh, all programming, the best. Yes. It's it's not that difficult. <laughs> being, your domain, being a... but yeah. <laughs> Wish you all the best. Yeah. And yeah, here comes my interesting question. I think this is the first time I'm asking this question on TGV. What is the funniest moment in your life so far? Funniest moment? Yeah. The funniest moment I'll say was, yes, I will say, my first class of my career, it was on 16th of March, 2000 year. And I still believe, Naveen, that the topic which I had taken, I was just first time entering in the teaching career in the university, which was Thapar Institute of Engineering and Technology at Patiala Punjab. The first topic I took was already covered. And my face was worth watching. And this was a master's class. I started with master's class. It was very funny. And luckily, I had that agility, perhaps now I can say, that I told, oh, it's already covered. Let's take a test. So the students said, no, 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 ma'am, not at all. No test. Do one thing, ma'am, please, you can continue once again. So they were not ready. And as and actually, I was a scholar, PhD scholar at that time. I was not so I, that, uh, today I can take, uh, with experience, we learn so much. So today I can do easily. But that time, switching over, first class of my career in the first organization was absolutely very atyp- uh, atypical, I can say. So can you imagine, you know, the topic is all over. And I'm, I'm, I've been told actually to teach that topic. Master student sitting. But we handled it well. I think they also did a great job in the class. They cooperated a lot. And uh, I could uh, handle it. I could enjoy my first class. <laughs> yeah, but I, th- sure. I think you you <laughs> you played it, you played it smart. Let's take the test. <laughs> yeah, actually, really, I had no option that time. To be honest, I'll be as honest with the audience as well. Mm. I had no option for that few seconds. I thought, oh, and that was not internet zamana also. And that, that was spontaneous, actually. Live, yeah, yeah, mm. 20, 22 years back. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing such a beautiful experience. And with that, let me fire the last bullet out of the rapid fire. So, Pratima, what will be one message that you'd like to give to your own younger version? Great. My message to the younger version, um, the, our community out here, will be get ready, feel positive, break the norms, not very conventional. Try new things. The world is a beautiful canvas. Take the paintbrush and put the best stroke which is possible. And believe me, every abstract painting is a story. So do not only converge to uh, how things are around you. Break the shackles and see what newness can happen. So take care of the good health, which is so important, the enabler for any job. So be it mental, be it physical, be it spiritual, be it social, be it digital health now, the fifth component. So take all together and uh, it is full of opportunities. Bang and be successful. I will say this. There's so many positive vibes and a lot of dose of inspiration throughout the conversation. And it was absolute pleasure hosting you, Pratima. Thank you so much for being part of TGV's journey in shaping the careers and lives of millions across the globe. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And it was truly a delight as well an honor to be in TGV, especially talking to you. For all, was amazing to me as well. Thank you so much for this opportunity. All right. So likewise, pleasure is uh, ours and hosting you. So, folks, before we move into the trivia section, here is a request to you. In case if you have loved this episode and found it useful, request you to share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who can benefit from TGV. Thank you so much in advance. All right, now let's hop on to the trivia segment of today's episode. And folks, today we spoke about the schools, the education, the agility, attitude in the new normal and all. So I thought... Let me ask you a question around schools. So do you know which school is the largest in the world in terms of number of students? I know you may be thinking, but let me tell you the answer. The city Montessori school in Lucknow, based out of India, is the largest school in the world in terms of number of students. And, you know, it has whopping 32,000 students. Interesting, isn't it? All right. So I would like to hear from each one of you on interesting pedagogies that you have come across in the new normal, which are going to help the student community or the learning community and request you to provide your feedback or use the comment section wherever you have 
tuned into or leverage our social media platforms and look forward to your responses. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. There's more in store, folks. Stay tuned. Until next time, bye-bye. See you all in the next episode with another wonderful guest and cover an amazing topic. Thank you.